I want to address the equal loudness contour that Fletcher Munson incurs. I'm not going to try to make this real complicated, but anytime you're doing EQ and stuff like that, that the foot this the equal loudness contour is a really big thing because basically, if you look at this, this blue line is an older version and the red line is a newer updated version. What's happening there is like if you look at like um, you're looking at your EQ right and your EQ is going all along at zero before you've done any boosting or subtracting it's like that line right there going across there okay so that's just really easy to understand now if you look around here around 1000 Hertz as it goes down to around 500 Hertz or so then it starts to shoot up over here at about 1000 Hertz to about 2000 Hertz it goes up and down and then between 2 and 5 or so it does that and then from 5 up to 10, it shoots up about there. Then it shoots down and then kind of straight up at a really steep slope. And what's happening there is right here, your ear hears that about level, just like your EQ at default with no work on it. And then when you go to here, that you need to push those frequencies in that area up because your ear doesn't hear them as well. And down here, you need to pull those frequencies down some because your ears hear them very well. And then when you get back up in here, you're pushing those frequencies up because your ear can't hear them as well. It's sloping down, and then it's sloping way up because you really can't hear them well. And on the other end, it's the same thing. It starts to slope up. The volume that needs those frequencies need to be at is going up and up and up because your ear can't hear them as well. So when you're dealing with an EQ and you've got an EQ, you've got a default EQ, and you're roaming around trying to figure out what you need to boost or subtract, you need to start there. You need to start boosting up in this area right in here and seeing if the, how that does the effects of the EQ. Cutting down around this area between, you know, 2,000 and 5,000, you know, K. And, you know, and then boosting 5,000 to 10,000, boosting up it, coming down a little bit here, and then it's shooting straight up at that angle up around 20K. Now, now on the other side also around 500K, and you start to gradually go up. you got to start increasing those those frequencies to make so that your ear hears it because basically if you put all your volume knobs at that levels at that contour it's just like your ear hears all those frequencies at the same decibel level does that make sense it's that simple it's not any more complicated than that and the problem is a lot of people don't understand that um, you're going to get into when you're EQ and you've got a sound around 500 hertz that's boxy sound or you don't like the sound in that guitar or that piano or synth or whatever and you're going to subtract on it. I mean, I can understand that. And that's just a personal preference about taste. But we're talking about how your ear hears sound. So at least you're starting out with your ear hearing the sounds like they're supposed to because you try to attenuate this over here because you don't like that sound. If you haven't boosted up here, boosted here, cut here, boosted there, that that sound might not sound boxy because it sounds boxy because these other frequencies aren't pushed up or attenuated where they're supposed to be. So you're thinking that this needs to be attenuated. Does that make sense? Um, I know that might sound complicated, but it's very simple. It's that simple. Sometimes you'll have that frequency there and you're thinking it needs to be attenuated because it doesn't sound right with the rest of the spectrum across the frequency. When these other frequencies haven't been set to the dB level, where they should be for your ear to hear all the frequencies at an equal decibel level. So they're not set to an equal decibel level when you're looking at your EQ, and so you're trying to cut on this because it doesn't sound right. Because all these other frequencies, all, the volume of all these other frequencies haven't been set where they're supposed to, so that your ear, this boxiness might completely disappear, if you had set your volume levels for these frequencies going up there, going up there, coming down here, going up there, and going there, that boxing, this might not be that even happening. Um, and that can go with any type of your time you're trying to uh, boost a frequency or subtract a frequency and you're EQing because and all those frequencies are set at zero across there or uh, who knows how they're set. You need to look at your spectrogram and see if they're following that contour and if you're boosting them and it's following that kind of shape so that your ear can hear the frequencies how they're supposed to because you're starting to boost or attenuating frequencies because the, it's not set to the correct volumes anywhere for those frequencies should be up here. You trying to attenuate here might be because 
this frequencies up here aren't pushed up enough to counteract these frequencies. Does that make sense? Because so, you're hearing this and it's, you know, you're starting to have to subtract that at 500 to get rid of that boxing this because you haven't pushed these frequencies up to where they're supposed to be. So you're subtracting, you're, you're basically trying to work a backwards equal loudness contour on your EQ. And I hope I've made that very simple for you to understand. It's that simple. It's not any more complicated than that. And if you didn't understand what I just said, go back a little bit in this video and listen to it again. Listen to it two or three times until it sinks in. You're trying to, you're trying to attenuate these frequencies because they sound too loud against these other frequencies because you haven't boosted them up to where they're supposed to be. So your ear hears them at an equal, ear hears them the way it's supposed to hear them. Because you push this frequency up here to your ear, this frequency at this decibel level, sounds like it's at the same decibel level as this but you don't even understand what that equal contour is supposed to be doing that flexion length and curve so instead of boosting these frequencies like you should be for your ear to hear correctly you're over here pushing these frequencies down instead of over here pushing them up where you're supposed to or pushing these bass frequencies up because all of a sudden this sounds boxy because you haven't pushed up these bass frequencies at this curve so you can ear hear them at the correct level because now this frequency over here that should be counteracting that so it hears them at the same decibel level. It's hearing these bass frequencies over here way lower. So you're thinking you have to subtract these frequencies, which you're, you're kind of doing it backwards. <laughs> Does that make sense? And so I've explained it twice now, and I think that's pretty clear. So I just wanted you to understand that so you can understand what that the equal loudness contour is and why it's important to you as far as EQing. And sometimes you can just emulate this, look at this, here. it's that zero here, and then it's shooting up at that many dp. You can actually take that red contour and paste it onto an EQ and throw that on there first and see what's happening. And if it's too much, you want to attenuate them at the same time. Let's say you put it on, you paste that, or those, that, those parameters and those settings, those attenuations and boosts on an EQ, and it's too much or not enough. You want to bring this one down a little bit, or then this one up a little bit, this one down a little bit, and these down a little bit, but at equal levels. Just like you're dealing with the VCA faders on a group of, you've got a group of tracks, and the VCA faders turning all those that you gain stage down at the same time. So they're coming down at an equal volume. Does that make sense? At equal amount. So if this coming down 2%, that, you know, if this is coming down a half a dB, over here for it to be an equal equally coming down that might have to come down like two or three db to equal that subtraction there does that make sense I, I, that's pretty clear you might want to listen to that a couple times if you didn't catch it but it's that simple and that's what the equal loudness contour is about so that when you're working with your eq that you know i see people pull out eqs and they start going all over the damn place they have a damn clue what the hell they're doing they have no idea what the hell's even going on. They're starting to search around for signals or frequencies they don't like, which is a great thing. Subtractive EQ first, and then additive EQ after that. But they don't even understand that their ear doesn't hear these frequencies as well, so they need to be boosted, so the ear hears them at the same level as over here. These need to be attenuated, these need to be boosted, and these got to be way boosted. That's why a lot of times you'll hear mixing engineers, and they're trying to boost the bass, trying to get more bass, or they're really boosting the high end to try to get some air, you know, because you know, they haven't even tried to set their mix to the equal loudness contour and why that is. And so you'll see people, they get in their car and they'll have a smiley face across their EQ, you know, <laughs> their pyramid, across their, 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 their uh, multi-band EQ, because they're trying to achieve that in a very simple way to try to hear those highs and try to hear that bass. Does that make sense? And so to understand that, I've tried to make that as simple as possible because it's very simple. And for you to understand that and mess with that and play with that, take like a reference track, an old reference track or something that hasn't had the EQ to shit out of it, and play around with it. Set an equal loudness contour on it. And I took a Rhiannon track one time from Fleetwood Mac, and I just pasted that on there, dude. And then I A-B'd it, and I, I, I listened to it without it for a while, and then I took it off it and listened to it for a while. And then I just sat and turned it on and put it on there for a while, and I listened to it the whole song all the way through. And then I went back and played it again, 
and I listened to it to about halfway through and then turn it off back the way it normal was. And it all of a sudden, it listened like I was listening to an AM radio in an old Studebaker that was falling apart. I mean, I'm serious. Because it had enhanced it that much. Because they weren't doing that stuff back then. And that's a really good way for you to understand what it's doing on that. But I just wanted to address that so you can understand that. Because people get so confused about EQ that once you understand this, when you start adding and subtracting EQ, that that's what you're trying to shoot for. Does that make sense? Now, there are times where after you've done this kind of work on it, you understand why these frequencies need to be boosted because your ear doesn't hear them as well as it does these frequencies down here or these frequencies here, that sometimes there will be. You'll have this frequency over here that just ain't quite right, dude, and in the mix it doesn't sound good, so you're trying to attenuate it or in one track and it just sounds like crap on that person's vocals and that's a totally different thing that's a different type of eq work that you're doing but if you don't start out with the way it's supposed to be so you can ear hear that it's real simple here's another example that you've got this vocal and you just paste this equal loudness contour on your eq and put it on that person's clean vocal here's what's happening the vocals have all these timbers that go with you're singing a c note but that person's timbers in their voice have all kinds of even and odd harmonics that are part of the timber of their voice, right? So when you put it on here and you put this equal loudness contour, all those timbers and notes and frequencies that are part of that, of her vocals or his vocals, are being attenuated and boosted where they're supposed to be so your can, ear can hear them at equal decibel levels so it hears them well. And you'd be surprised how much it improves just that you just be like wow dude that just my vocals sound so much better with that and then you might have to mess with it a little bit because your timbers or your voice might be a little bit different but for the most part it'll go through with everything you've got to be real careful about messing with synthesizers and stuff because you throw it on synth pads and you've done a lot of work and it's going to totally screw it up because it sounds the way you want it now don't you know i mean does that make sense because you know, it's already have all the stuff done to it that you want done to it. So you throw that on there, you're like, oh, no, wait a minute. But for most stuff, it just, that's an understanding of why you have so much problems with EQ, because you don't understand that is the first thing. And then after you've dealt with that issue, whenever you're EQ, and the next thing is to go find frequencies you don't like for that certain instrument, for that vocal, for that guitar part, for that bass part, for that drum part, or whatever. Then you start going after frequencies that you need to attenuate a little bit that are not right in that or boost, you know, to get them sounding right for that instrument. And then by the time you get done doing all that for your mix, for the entire mix, that you've already dealt with most of that already. And you're, you're, you're not, you're not going to go crazy when you start trying to figure out how to boost those frequencies if you understand that they need to be boosted or subtracted in those areas for your ear to hear it correctly. Now, in some music, different genres, different types of music, different compositions that you might attenuate or boost less in those areas for that composition or that type of music. Does that make sense? Don't expect every time you just throw this contour on, it's going to sound awesome for an entire mix. It probably won't. You're going to have to adjust it some. But just understand, those are normally the problem areas you need to work on. And then after you do that, then go hunt problem frequencies. Does that make sense? It's that simple, and that will help you so much with EQ, you will not believe how much better, once you start messing around with it, what that means. Now you understand the timbers, how, they're, how the decibel levels are supposed to be between different timbers and different parts of the timbers for different, different instruments, and how that's making them sound better, the way they should sound, the way your ear can hear them best. Does that make sense? So there, that's a huge thing. That will improve your EQ work 100% just understanding that. And if there's some things you didn't understand about what I'm trying to tell you, then you can ping me or research it. And ask three or four people that you really think understand a lot about EQ and ask them about that. And ask them about attenuating and boosting those frequencies and what kind of process. But I have found you address that first then problem sit frequencies with attenuation of problem frequencies, and then go after boosting frequencies that you really think need to be boosted, working with some certain instrument or a vocalist or something like that.